Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sunday morning worship with St. Paul's Episcopal Church on Homecoming Sunday, September 19th. It's St. Paul's 141st birthday. And we're so glad that you have joined us for worship this morning for this service of spiritual communion. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless the Lord and Father. And with it, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or grapevine figs. No more can salt water yield fresh. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Take two. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. After leaving the mountain, Jesus and his disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it. For he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. For on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. On the road, like a bunch of goofs, they start arguing about who would be the greatest. Which one of them was going to sit at the right hand of Jesus? One of the Gospels says, this one just says that they were arguing about who was going to be the greatest. Now we have to take comfort in that, good people. Because in the church sometimes, and we've all experienced this in the church, I experienced it as a lay person, I experienced it as an ordained person. I haven't experienced it here hardly at all. But people are people. People get competitive with one another. People take their faith, uh, whatever faith that they follow, whatever religion that they subscribe to, whatever teachers they listen to, and suddenly, like everything else out in the world, church becomes a place where people work out their, their inner needs for power, their inner needs for prestige, their inner, need, their inner need to feel important. Now, we all have that need to feel important. Over the 140 years of St. Paul's Episcopal Church, though, I'm sure you can think back on folks, those of you who've been here a while, who, who did just that. You can probably think of times when you might have done that. There's something incredibly satisfying about leading a church, especially a church like this one, full of people like this, full of mission like this, full of energy like this, alive with the Holy Spirit like this. It's, it's a wonderful place uh, to get some fulfillment in our lives. But see, Jesus reminds us today, as does James, that church has got to be different. And one of the things that I believe you'll find if you understand the history of St. Paul's is moments where there are folks who in spite of their personal uh, charisma, their personal power, uh, the, the power that they, they wielded in this church, the fact that they really were important people, they humbled themselves. They humbled themselves to this church. They offered their gifts to this church. They offered themselves in 
they came here as a fellow child of God just like you. I love the humble origins of this place, how it started off as a Bible study over in Sweet Auburn. When you read about all the trials and tribulations of this church, outside of the fact that it's a historically African-American parish in the South that, that's weathered the fact that we are surrounded by a culture that is none too hospitable so many times to people of color, that this is a church that has continued to walk in that kind of humility and that kind of faith and that we have leaders who have been able to put that need to be the greatest aside and to find the core of their leadership in their humility and to find the lay people who find the core of their leadership in their spiritual life in their humility. Now, I don't think that kind of thing happens by accident. James really describes what uh, is the, the genesis of this kind of humility. He talks about wisdom that comes from above. And he says that envy and selfish ambition, like the envy and selfish ambition that the disciples had, is false to the truth. It does not come down from above, and that it's unspiritual, and that it's devilish. And so what we've seen here is, is people in our midst who have found that wisdom from above. James also gives us a picture of the kind of work that we have to do if we are to be people who embody that kind of wisdom. He talks about conflicts and disputes. See, the church in his day was no different from our own. They had conflicts and disputes over all kinds of things, over who sat where, we talked about recently, over who uh, led the churches? Was it going to be Paul? Was it going to be Apollos? And James says, uh, you know what? This kind of thing really goes back to our earliest sorts of origins. You want something that you do not have. You covet what other people have. And so you do terrible things to other people in order to get what you want. He says, you ask, but you don't receive. And you ask wrongly, and you just ask wrongly in order that you can get stuff that you can spend on pleasure. That you can have people invest time and energy in you just to be able to throw your weight around. And so we get a picture of what the kind of bad leadership that can happen in the world and in the church looks like. And this is the kind of leadership that we see so often out in the world. We see, so, we see it so often in the world of politics and entertainment and people who are very high profile uh, are so lacking in this key element of humility. But see, thanks be to God, St. Paul's is a place that has never lacked that key element, is it? One of our priests, even at one point when the Diocese of Atlanta couldn't find that humility in one of its private schools, which is now no longer associated with the Episcopal Church, wouldn't admit one of the king children into the church. Thanks be to God, this priest went down to the cathedral and set himself in the back of that cathedral or in the middle of that cathedral and said he was going to stay there. Not only that, he was going to go on a hunger strike until the Episcopal Diocese of Atlanta relented and repented of their racism. That is the kind of humility that this place has raised up. And that is the kind of leadership that has arisen out of that kind of humility. But see, it doesn't happen in a vacuum. That kind of humility and that kind of leadership is generated by people who recognize that they are spiritual beings in physical bodies. James says that it comes about when we submit ourselves to God 
that when we draw near to God, and that God will draw near to us. So this comes full circle with Jesus today because the disciples have been engaged in this very worldly conflict of who is the greatest. And Jesus sits down and says, bring one of those kids over to me. And he picks a child up and he says, if you want to welcome me, you have to welcome her. And whoever welcomes me doesn't welcome me, but welcomes the one who sent me, welcomes God. See, we have to orient ourselves constantly throughout our spiritual journeys by engaging with the church, by coming together and praying together, by soaking ourselves in spiritual practice and prayer, and by gathering as God's people uh, for the body and blood of Christ, and, and even more importantly, perhaps gathering in God's people, gathering as God's people to love one another and care for one another, and to be God's hands and feet out in the world, St. Paul's. We have been through so much these last two years together. We certainly have. And we are just now beginning to uh, slowly find ourselves coming back together in person. But know that St. Paul's has at its heart this humility and has everything that she needs from God to be the kind of church that welcomes the least of these and that makes themselves first by making themselves, by putting themselves last. As you enter into the next, the next uh, period of your life, next period of your history, the next era of St. Paul's with the arrival of Mother Samuel's, there will be all sorts of new challenges in the next 140 years of St. Paul's. But if we, St. Paul's, always go back to that heart that Jesus shows us today, that's not one that endeavors to be in the world through being competitive or like the people in James's day coveting what one another has, spending their uh, possessions on worldly goods, a place uh, that is humble and that can sacrifice itself for the sake of the world, for that same, uh, be a place that embodies that same self-giving love that God has for us. And it will be a future in which we are God's church, St. Paul's. And I can think of no better blessing to the world for this place, no better blessing to one another, and no better blessing to God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
with the Father and the Son. He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. We look to you, O God, to teach us how to be whom you created us to be. Shine your light on the path ahead. Catch us when we take a wrong turn, and by your spirit, move us in the right direction. We are your children. Teach us how to live, O God. We yearn for peace, but are constantly at war with ourselves, our neighbors, and the nations throughout the world. We are your children. Teach us how to make peace, O God. We, your church, are easily distracted by things that don't matter. Turn your eyes to you. Open your hearts to you. Deepen our love of you. Bless our bishops, priests, and deacons. May we teach each other how to walk in love. We are your children. Teach us how to serve you, O oh God. Our bodies ache, our spirits are restless, and our minds grow weary with constant worry. Lead us to a place of wholeness and make each of us agents of healing in this world. We pray for those who have asked our prayers today. Pat Allen, Louisa Anthony, Mary Bowden, Harriet Bowens, Silva Britt, Ida Demons, Ivory Duhart, Kimberly English, Vanita Ford, Kayla Hall, Cleopatra Johnson, Leighton Johnson, Barbara Manson, Carl Manson, Gervis Manson, Francis B. Martin, Christy Moffitt, Vincent Murray, Dorothy Ratliff, Mildred Singleton, Bonnie Smith, Edna Stevens, Emery Stevens, James Ward, Jerry Ward, Mary Ware, Ann Washington, Charlie Winston, Sarah Wood, and Jackie Ford Wright. We are your children. Teach us how to trust in your healing embrace. When a dear one dies, we ask that you receive them into your eternal kingdom as promised. We pray today for the repose of the soul of the recently departed. Assure those who grieve that you will not leave them desolate in their sorrow, but hold their loved one close to your heart. We are your children. Teach us the way home to you. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you. My own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Dear siblings in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sunday morning worship at St. Paul's Episcopal Church. On this 141st birthday, this 141st anniversary of St. Paul's. My goodness, we have come this far by faith.
St. Paul's. And we're so glad that all of you are gathered together online today. And if you're visiting with us for the first time, welcome home to St. Paul's. We've been worshiping together, praising God together, being God's hands and feet and arms and voice and face and ears and body out in the world for 141 years. And we would love it if you would become a part of our 142nd year and beyond. So if you're visiting with us, please email us at welcome at stpaulsatl.org. And if you're watching this online, we are having a special celebration after the 1115 service starting at about 1230 across the street in the parking lot under a big tent. So we'll be outdoors and we'll be safer. And uh, you are invited to come. We'll have some light uh, prepackaged refreshments for everyone and some music and a time of fellowship and celebration as God's church and as St. Paul's Episcopal Church, a church that, as I talked about in my homily, uh, started with humble origins uh, by uh, nine people in Sweet Auburn um, over across town from here, some of whom have relatives, have ancestors who are still a part of this church. So we're glad you've joined us today for this service of spiritual communion. I hope that you will come back to celebrate communion with us and to worship with us again next week and beyond. And now I turn things over to the vestry for announcements. Good morning, St. Paul's. My name is Michael Blakely and I'm your senior warden. I'd like to thank you for attending worship with us this Sunday morning. Again, if this is your first time, welcome home. We'd like to consider you one of ours and please come again. I do have a couple announcements this morning. Uh, right after service, the 1115 service, we will have uh, our 141st anniversary uh, across the street in the upper parking lot. Uh, we have tents out there. Please bring your chairs. Uh, we'll have packaged cupcakes, uh, some packaged drinks, and we'll skip down and we'll see everybody. It's been a while. Uh, good news about our air condition. They should start installing the air condition on Monday. Uh, this should probably take somewhere between seven to ten days to get it installed. So uh, we will have air conditioning here in the church pretty soon. Also, I say congratulations to Zachary Harrison on being recognized as a semifinalist for the Merit National Merit Scholarship. He was one of three uh, students who were selected out of Marietta. This is a very high honor. So next time you see Zachary, say congratulations. And his parents say congratulations. Also, in the uh, coming weeks, we will start our Stewardship 2022. Uh, please look at the information for that. And uh, today we'll kick off our Sunday School. Uh, in your e-news, you'll see uh, different links you can click on according to the age group. Uh, click on that and that'll be some Zoom information. Uh, that'll get you to the classes. And that Zoom information will stay with you for every class this year. So you know you used to have to look each year, each morning or Sunday morning, the information you see in front of you will always be the same for your class group. I'd, I'd like to thank everyone who showed up yesterday for the uh, church cleanup. That was part two. We had a great turnout. The weather was a little bad, but we had a good turnout. And again, we'd like to say thank you. And finally, uh, this Sunday at our 1115 service, we will do, be doing live streaming uh, of that service. It's just a test program. We will do live streaming. Uh, you can look at your e-news bulletin, and that will give you information on how to look at the, the uh, service. Thank you, and have a blessed day. Dear siblings in Christ, through Christ, let us continually offer to God the sacrifice of praise. That is, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. But do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God.
the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and creator of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you, and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son. The holy food and drink of new 
and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, wherever we are, we are bold to sing. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. During these next moments of quiet meditation, receive whatever gifts God makes available to you in whatever form God makes them available to you. We share spiritual communion today.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, God, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May the blessing of God, may the blessing of the God of Abraham and Sarah, and of Jesus Christ, born of our sister Mary, and of the Holy Spirit, who broods over the world as a mother over her children, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Goodbye for now, St. Paul's. Uh, just a reminder, today after the 1115 service, starting probably around 1230, we'll be having a gathering in the parking lot across the street under a big tent outdoors. So uh, you still have time to get over here. We'll have some uh, very light refreshments and a time of celebration together for St. Paul's 141st anniversary. And happy anniversary, St. Paul's. And to all of you who are worshiping with us, have a great week. Please pray for us. We're gonna pray for you. And come and join us again for worship in person at St. Paul's at 1115 or here online at 10 a.m.